TLO, what's pop? We are on Twitch. We are live. But by the time you see this, we won't be. So just leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. This is Can't Pay, We'll Take It Away, Season 4, Episode 15. And I see a warning screen. That's new. I normally wouldn't do this. <laughs> but I feel like it warrants it. Uh, don't forget, we do got Patreon and we do got merch. Uh, everything is in the link below. Um, Twitch, twitch.com. Lock in with us. The username's at the bottom, man. Let's get into this, man. I'm a little, I, I'm, I'm ready for this. This, I feel like negativity is on the, on the brink. <laughs> Talk to me. Be prepared for scenes of intense aggression and highly offensive language from the very start. From the start? Throughout, which may distress some viewers. Mm -mm. What happened? Mm -mm. Negativity give us superpowers. Happens Come on. When you get into debt. I'll do what I want. I will pay no, 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 with no, 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 no. you. Trillion. Okay. Personal debt in the UK reached nearly one and a half trillion pounds in 2016. And it's young people who are the hardest hit. The average debt of young Britons has almost tripled since the financial crash in 2008. People under 35 are responsible for 48% of UK debt. All right. Stuart McCracken and Elmore Victor are High Court enforcement agents. They travel hundreds of miles each week, collecting debts and seizing goods. Today, they're in Flintshire, North Wales, with a writ to collect nearly £5,000 owed to a garage. This is our next customer, Mr. Oliver Wayman. So how much does uh, our friend owe? If you give us £5,000, we'll give him change. Really? The garage carried out some repair work on a truck, but the debtor, Oliver... They starting with, bro? Yeah, we could get real negative. The Wayman didn't pay the bill. It's here, is it? Oh, interesting. Oh, hang on, there's two houses here. That's the cottage, the one on your right hand side? All right, okay. If Mr. Wayman can't or won't pay today, the agents have the right to seize goods and vehicles to offset the debt. Oh, very nice. But this job is going to be one of the most stressful the agents have ever faced. Hello there, sir. Uh, we're after Mr. Wayman. Yes, I'm Mr. Wayman, yes. Oliver Wayman? No. We're after Oliver Wayman. But he's not here. Is he, did, does he live here? Are you Mr. Wayman and are you not? He doesn't live here. He lives. I'm his father. Ah, right. He just okay. comes now and again. Right, okay. Um, I mean. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, okay. <laughs> We're High Court Enforcement Agent. No. <laughs> get, off. Mm. Well, get off my land, please. No, we won't be, sir. Mm. Well, we'll, on your way. We won't be leaving, sir. This is my property, not his. Oh, Step by the gate there. No, now. we won't be, sir. We, you won't. We won't be, no. Fine, stay there. Okay, no, that's fine. Who owns this vehicle here, sir? Fine. Is it you? Have you got any documentation for it? Uh, forget it, mate. I'm not talking. Oliver Wayman's father claims his son doesn't live with him. Why are you handling it like this, though? But as this is the address on the writ, the agent... All it do is take a little moment to step back and just have the conversation. I get it. The initial anger. He came out cool, though. Let's ...have a right to stay and investigate further. He's on finance. We won't be, no. Not at the moment, so no. Okay, thank you. No, we thank won't. You. We won't be, right. so. <coughs> Do that then, sir. No problem. Mr. Wayman disappears around the back. But then, another man appears from a neighbouring house. They go Oliver right there. I'm um, waiting for this gentleman. Gonna get your van up drive. Are you Mr. Wayman? No, get your van up drive. We won't be right. staying there at the we moment, sir. This house, sir. So this is. This is my house. It's my drive. Get your okay. van for drive. It's, it'll be staying there at the moment, sir. Get your van up the fucking drive. It's, it's staying there at the moment. I want to bring my van on the drive. Where's your van? Over there. The man denies he's the debtor, Oliver. Why Wayne. didn't you put it there in the first place? Eman. But Vic is suspicious. 
so we've got a high court drift for this property. I know you don't. I know you don't, please. I tell you what, shall I ring the police about your trespassing? Yep, do that. Do that. Perfect idea. Do that. I think that's going to be the easiest. We're not bullying anyone, sorry. You're the one that's Bullying is crazy. Like, when you come out with this type of aggression, what is supposed to happen? I'm going to be real with you. Like, I get the anger. No, no, 100%. Like, I might come out with this aggression. But I, like, I would know, though, it's not going to get me nowhere. I just want to be on that type of time. Higher than attitude, sir. Get your van off the drive. It's, like, it's not Move going van. anywhere, sir. We're protecting an asset at the moment. Move your van. Well, I couldn't give a shit. Yeah, good. 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 <laughs> good. So that's why it's staying here. So that's, so that's why it's staying here. Some people are aggressive. Um, it can be physically aggressive as well, but it's something you've just got to learn to take in your stride. Some people use it as a tactic to think that we're just going to jump back in the van and leave, but it's not going to stop us executing the rip. Move your van off my drive. You can park over there and mm -hmm. do what you fucking mm -hmm. want, mm -hmm. but that is not staying here. Mm -hmm. Are you Mr. Eamon? No. You're not? No. I'm over there and you can this is no, my drive. Fine. Fuck off. Right, I'll go around this way then. With such extreme reactions, Vic suspects that the two men aren't just neighbours. He spots a clue. Yeah, no way. That van over there is the same registration as that, mate. That's my car. Yeah. This gentleman has told yeah. me that's his vehicle. Yeah. No, it's not. It's mine. He just told me. He just told me it's his. No, it's my to... vehicle. Well, then someone is lying. Yeah, someone is. Someone yeah. He just line. told me it's his vehicle. Can I ask you something? What? Are you all over way, No, man? I'm not. Move your van. Fuck off. Because are you related to this gentleman? No. Now get in your van. Fuck off. All right. You're not related? No. You're not... Uh, no. Mis not even... Uh, if you're not Oliver, you're not another Mr. Wayman. No. Oh, man. Double trouble. That's it for the mate. It's definitely him. I've had so many lies thrown at me of people that don't own property, that don't own goods, claim not to be the defendant, and then find out that they are the defendant. It's part of the job. It's a game, isn't it? It's water off a duck's back to me. Vic. Water off a duck's back doesn't don't duck, ducks don't get wet. Ducks don't get wet, don't they? It just rolls off. Changes tactic. He wants to try and calm the man down and persuade him to reveal his identity. Excuse me, sir. Can I can I just have a quiet word with you for two seconds? You can't have a fucking are you, quiet word of anybody. Are you, are you Oliver? No, I'm not, mate. Who are you? This, hey, this it's none of your to... fucking okay. business. Right. Why are you so protective? Why? Because I don't fucking like people like you. Well, I've got a job to do. And then you've got a job and, to and do. You don't, I don't know you and you don't know me. Let's be honest, OK? I, I don't know you. I'm not reason with you, mate. Take your van and fuck off. Step no. on there if you want, no, mate. Just stay Step on my life. Why are you on my job? You're trespassing. I'm not trespassing. You're trespassing. You're trespassing. You're trespassing. You're trespassing. You're trespassing. Fucking well, mate, you sure. fucking arrogant cunt. <laughs> I see why the warning was put there now. The situation is becoming volatile. I'm not Can getting I... irate for any other reason than your van okay. is on my drive, so move it. With tempers rising, will the agents ever get the £5,000? They... I'm taking one of them vehicles. Simple. I've been cursed that one too many times. He came for. Oh, move, move, move back! Move back! Move back! Move back! Move back, I'm telling you! Showing bro throat was just crazy. Hold on. Okay. Be prepared for scenes of intent which care. may distress some. High Court enforce no, a couple of live no. okay. who the man is. Okay. We don't need a recap, I'm sorry. So Stuart turns detective. His paperwork gives the name of Oliver Wayman's DJ equipment business. DMT Audio Visual. I went on the internet, found a mobile number. I'm going to ring him. The man's mobile rings. <laughs> we can resolve this matter. We are. We are. We're not going to go anywhere, sir. I've just rung your mobile for DMT audio visual, and it's just wrong because you put it on silent. Yeah. Yeah. So. So you're Oliver. The jig is up, buddy. Stuart has blown Oliver's cover. I believe that you're Oliver. Yeah, you are. I thought so. Yeah. It is him. It's immensely satisfying when you actually prove somebody wrong, when they've been lying and lying and lying, and our gut instinct. And then lied so hard, he almost believed it. He don't even think he Oliver. He was lying so tough, his name was no longer Oliver in his mind. And our true instinct has come up top. With Oliver's lies exposed, 
The agents must now try and recover the £5,000 they came for. Come on, let's talk mass about. Come on, then. The total amount standing so at the moment is £4,946. But Oliver has his own version of events about the garage debt. The truck, which belongs to my friend... Right. These people be... Yo, temperaments be crazy. Now he calm and collected and explained. That's my beater, and he said, take it somewhere and get the MOT on it, because MOT's run out, yeah? Right. So I rang them, and they said, yeah, we'll sort it for you. Right. Oliver claims he authorised £500 worth of work on his friend's truck, but received a bill for £3,500. He refused to pay. Apply for it to be set aside so I can put my side of the story that's, through. That's fine, and that's the right way to do it. And I've sent it by recorded delivery as well. As Oliver claims he's appealed the case, Vic phones the court to see if the writ is still active. What, what's on the system currently? Right, just by Right. Your form was filled in incomplete. So now, at the moment, this is an active writ, OK? <laughs> Where can I get money from? Working my balls off to pay off my fucking debt. Now you want some sympathy. You can call this man all type of all type of genitalia, all type of stuff. Like you wild. Oliver now claims he has no means to pay the five thousand pounds. Well, you got a Range Rover and a van and some probably the DJ equipment. Demands. The only option for the agents is to seize goods. Oliver's work van is free of finance, so Stuart decides to clamp it. Without the van, Oliver's DJ equipment business is at serious risk. I'm not supposed to work without the truck, that'll be it then. I thought that is the only way I can make any money is my van. When we deal with a, a death... This is a nice house. This is his parents' house and he lives in the guest house? Is that the guest house? What is... So if they don't want to make an effort to pay... Was that a garage? To debt, you leave us no choice. But I don't want to take away someone's work vehicle because if he's not earning money, he's not going to be able to pay the debt. So we can obviously look at a payment plan. Despite all the abuse, the agents decide to throw Oliver a lifeline. See, they so nice, bro. Oh my God, they, bro, Oliver just cussed you out so bad and you still throwing lifeline? I believe lifeline? it has 48 hours. We'll put that on a control kit agreement. The vehicle, yeah? Yeah. I think, to be honest, we're being pretty decent with them. A control goods agreement means that if Oliver doesn't pay within 48 hours or resolve it with the court, the agents can take the van to offset the debt. But before they can make their offer, Oliver calls in reinforcements. Hey, are you all right, son? Hi, boys. Yeah, hi, Bailey. Right. Are you people on now, some old pensioner, maybe, yeah? You what, sorry? People on some old pensioner now. Hi. Dang, he called the whole neighborhood, I said. Bullies, that's all you are, bullies. Taking people's homes. We don't do that. Bullies. Mm. It says on the back, yeah, yeah. It says bullies. Yeah. Thugs. The protesters. I, I believe it says high court, high court bailiff or something. Are from a local anti bailiff group. You're gonna find this everywhere. You oh my god, they didn't call 1 800 anti bailiff? What is going on? Mm. Yeah. We've had enough. Mm. We've had enough of these folks. You tell me what you do that you're so proud of, you high court bailiff. You are as dull. You're, this lady is defending people who haven't paid their bills. All of these dudes, all of these dudes doing is coming to collect. Like I don't pay your bills. Simple as that. Okay, no, it's fine. No, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Stewart. Stewart, I wouldn't even play like that. I'd go ahead and take the whole van. You was trying to throw a lifeline. I wouldn't even throw that lifeline. <laughs> I couldn't like the I, I don't know. Decides to call the police. Need immediate police assistance, please. A very high amount of attention. We're getting threats and all sorts. We need immediate police assistance to breach the peace. Well, I don't know what you do for a living, but I know what I do for I know a living. What you, trust me, I know what you do okay. for a living. It's license. Unlawful. I'm, it's license. Unlawful. Yeah. 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 I'm going to it's just... unlawful. He has the highest, <laughs> the highest 
permission of the land, doesn't it? On it, right? It is admissible. I know because the dude uses every day, made back home in the pool. All that right. Is okay. Wait, is it not signed? Ah, it's scouts, sir. Okay. It doesn't need to be signed. There's an high court stamp. People think that the job that we're doing is incorrect. The laws that we're enforcing are incorrect. But we wouldn't be doing this job if we're going to break any laws. I'm not in the job to break laws. I know the laws like the back of my hand. Despite the intimidating situation, Vic needs to put the deal to Oliver. I'm trying to help you, mate. We're going to try and give you 48 hours to raise funds or get your paperwork back to where you were supposed to get it. Yeah. Oliver seems prepared to listen. But the protesters aren't backing down. You need to get out of my private space, please. You need to get out of my private space. I just want to get... No, I'm going to go... You're on private property. Yeah, I've got the right to be here. I've got a right to be here. No, you do not. You'll have to walk round me, right, because you can't invade my space. Right, he's got to walk round. I've got to... You Oh, my God. The police arrive just in time. They came pretty quick, the police. I ain't going to lie. How old are officer? It's high court writs. There's no wet signature oh. on that bit. Can you just yes. go and stand in there while I just speak yeah. to the yeah. yeah. So he's in the High Court yeah, stamp is there. Um, uh, so it's just give valid. him just stand over there a minute while I find out. Yeah. All, all I'm here for is breach of the peace. Yeah. With the police present, Vic tries once again to sign the agreement with Oliver. Obviously, we know now you love you, so if we have to return, we will have to return. Is that a threat? No, I said if we have to return, we have to return with her. Is that a threat? I get it though. They 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 gotta reach. <laughs> Excuse me, it's a high court writ. I've got the right no, to be here. You have just threatened oh, okay, I've got the control to take it. So we got we've agreed to give yeah, you forty hours. Most, yeah, most can you just follow us to the van. So we've got to take the palm off. Like, right, right. Despite the protesters' objections, the agents have persuaded Oliver to accept their offer. He Oliver knows at the end of the day, this is my. My situation, and I'll take care of it. These protesters are just... ...now has 48 hours to either settle the debt or get the writ... They, all of them protesters have are people who did not pay their bills. ...side by the court. If he fails, the team will be back goods for the van. So we were that close of walking away, when the next minute you've got... The monster raving Linny party. You've got uh, three mobile cameramen in your face, in your personal space, He's got a pretty good case to go back to court, but he needs to go back to court. Mm. I just hope he doesn't take his legal team with him. Yeah, his case sounded legit. Like, I only authorized $500. When I came back, they handed me a $3,000 bill. I'm not paying that. It, it makes sense, but like, come on now. And he has proof. He got receipts, so... Last year, the number of county court judgments issued against consumers in England and Wales reached their highest level since the financial crisis in 2008. More than 2,000 CCJs were issued every day. In the first quarter of 2016, the total value of county court judgments against consumers in England and Wales was 433 million. Plumstead, South East London. High Court enforcement agents Delroy Anglin and his son Dale are on their way to recover a debt of nearly £7,000 owed by Daniel White to his ex-girlfriend. Ex-girlfriend is cr Okay. Yeah, 6,785.17. All right. His ex-girlfriend proved in court that she'd spent significant amounts of money on Daniel during their five-year relationship. Daniel's ex escalated her case to the High Court, and the agents are here today with a writ. That seems petty, but also ingenious. That is genius. If I buy you something, I'm keeping the receipts 100%, because like, <laughs> at the end of the day, a relationship is an investment. And I want return on my investment, or I want my money back. <laughs> it's a warranty. Spotting an open door, they quickly gain access to the block of flats. It's quick, 
quick thinking, well guys. Third floor. It was quick moving, that was. Catching awesome. that door. Yeah, I had to. Is it open? Oh, it got a chain. Uh, my name's Dale Angle. I come for some agent look for Mr. Daniel White. Yes, that's me. Say yourself. Where's the little high court writ against yourself? Yes, I, I received. I did find your office. Um, I'm not actually living here. I've just been offered a sort of a couch to sleep on. So I've got. Right, whose house uh, is this? Uh, it's just sort of let me stay here. Um, Who was the claimant to you then? Oh, uh, that was my ex partner. Your ex partner? Like, yes. The agents need to get into the flat to assess. They didn't broke up. Then she just sued him for everything she ever bought him. That's tough. That's like that's like that's like kind of like you can't give a gift back. You can't you can't take a gift back. You gave it to me because you know at the time we was you know rocking with each other. But I still like the idea of it. I ain't even gonna hold. You. Whether there are any assets. 2024. Great idea inside that they could seize whoever his ex-partner is is ahead of their time a genius a scholar needs a statue in whatever town this is if daniel can't or won't pay the debt back to his ex this person here yeah. who's couch sleeping, oh, this, who is is this, my, this is my partner so you don't yeah. sleep on the couch at all well i do sleep on the couch well, let's go in and have a look Sean. come in thank you daniel claims that he doesn't live in the flat but Dale is suspicious. Obviously, it's your partner's house. There's photos of you two, obviously, everywhere. Oh, yeah, exactly. So, obviously, you live here. Here's, here's what it is. With Daniel's lie exposed, Dell turns up the pressure. Daniel just lived with all his little girls. Like, that's not, that's not a good move. Since first, Daniel, can you pay the money? No. Have you not got any money or savings or...? Well, nothing. So... We don't know that. We've already caught you out being economical with the truth, haven't we? <laughs> Some people do tell a few little white lies. Some people will generally be intimidated and scared themselves, and they'll tell it out of fear. It's our job, effectively, to find out the difference between people that can't pay and people that won't pay. You can see the issue we're going to have today, then, if you're not going to make any effort to try and make, get this paid on. Yeah, no, I know, but there's not a great deal that I, can, that I can do about it, really, at the moment. You don't have any family or friends that can help you? Nothing that can help at this, uh, this age. No, not this, this amount of money. I come from a very poor family. Daniel claims so uppity. he can't pay and is reluctant to ask for help. The agent's only option is to seize goods. The issue we need to deal with now is obviously who owns the goods inside of here. Yeah. Can you get your partner on the phone? I don't know if you want to speak to her. So well, she's... you got to use a credit card. You can't use cash when you're buying anything, apparently. Because they need proof. You just pull up your bank statements, but... Apply evidence. Yeah, keeping receipts is wild. I, the whole concept of keeping a receipt is kind of crazy to me. Like, it's a little piece of paper. I'm going to lose this. So who actually bought the stuff in here? Daniel calls his current partner, Natasha. You've got proof of the stuff you own in the house? Oh, what, the bailiff, sir? Is that not? She's on her, her way back. He is embarrassed. You've been trying to protect your girlfriend from this, which is fine. I'd expect you to do that as a man. Yeah. But the bottom line is, this needs to be paid or we need to come to an arrangement. Okay. When debtors get into debt, it's important that they resolve it. Because if they don't... you all going to get him 48 hours too? They resolve it. The infringes on everybody around you. You need to face up to it and you need to deal with it. I'm there to ensure that the debt is paid. And I drill down and dig in until such time as it is paid. 20 minutes later, Daniel's girlfriend, Natasha, arrives home. If she can't show that the goods in the flat belong to her, she risks losing them to pay off her partner's debt. Does she Honestly. walk in, crying? Obviously, he cannot. He doesn't. I don't take him as one as to be defending your honor like that. Can they at least just stand like that or something? The agent's visit has clearly come as a shock. Like I said, he doesn't even live here. It's not on the tenancy agreement. Okay, he's not on the he tenancy agreement, does he? One second, stop. Okay. Calm down and talk. Yeah, firstly. Well, I'm saying, how do I know that your possessions are not his? 
Well, you're saying he doesn't live he here. He didn't even live what? here until September last year. Okay. Which clearly shows these are my possessions. <coughs> Have you got any receipts for the items here? Period. I can only show you bank statements. Please. If there's not receipts, I'm going to take the items from this house. Bank statements don't work? Because you can't, you you right. Natasha, you need See, to I'm trying listen. to speak so we can get a result. Well, you know what? You need to listen. Stop getting emotional. Were well, you going to listen? You need to speak to us and we can try and sort this out. Natasha has no proof. Any of the goods in the flat. This is looking like a single man above me. <laughs> you real single after this episode. Are hers, and Daniel is still making no effort to raise funds. I'll tell you, I've asked you, I want you to listen, right? And if you don't want to listen, I'd listen, I'll listen. Right? Now, we're here because your partner owes money, and he's not giving us any choice because he says he can't pay one pence. Now, if he's not prepared to help himself, then this is going to happen because of you. Now, I'll ask you again. Can we come to some form of payment arrangement? Otherwise, I can guarantee you I will be removing. If this is going to be the, what it is. <laughs> Why is she with him? It seems like she know that he ain't worth nothing. She just said it. You need to ring your mom. Like you always do is what she wanted to really say after. The agents have been in the flat for nearly 40 minutes. Finally, Daniel starts to make some calls to try and raise funds. I understand it's emotional for us. It's obviously got the round, obviously it's from a previous relationship, so it's even harder on her. But we seem to be making some headway now. I'm going to say, uh, can you call her? Who, sorry? My, my mum. Yeah, I'm not watching. <laughs> my name's Dad Anglin. I can't force my agent. My mom said, can you call her? Bro, if you don't man up, the outstanding sum we've come here today for, as it stands, is £6,785.17. Daniel's mum can only pay £3,000. Pence. Da Look at Daniel. That. This is a professional move right here. Caressing of the elbow. And she's on a slight lean, like, bro, get away from me. Like, he's just trying to be like, yo, babe, I love you. Please don't kick me out. His mom can only pay £3,000. But thousands enough. Like, set up the payment arrangements. Less than half the debt. How much can you afford to pay a mom? £70. What do you think about? A month. Dell phones the office. He hopes the claimant will accept the offer of £3,000 plus £70 a month until the debt is cleared. 70 pounds a month, that's like 18 years. Yeah, we were okay to uh, carry on that respect, mate. 3,000 pounds today, 70 pounds per month, yeah. Excellent, that's what it is, yeah. All right, Del, cheers, mate. Okay. How many months is that? That's 70, that's a, that's a long time. It's in, it's all good, all done. Your arrangements been accepted as well. Yeah. So, you know, apologise for how it was. It must have been a shock for you, to be fair. And, you know, it, it's, at least it's sort of... Uh, sort of Ma'am, are you staying with this human being right here? It's going to get addressed now, isn't it? The case is resolved for now. But Daniel and his partner don't intend to let the debt go unchallenged. It's not fair when someone's trying to ask for money back when they was in a relationship just because they're upset now. So it's not right to go and expect the money. So we will take her back to court and probably actually... It is bogus, though. That, that That's a crazy court case. I salute his ex-girl, but, like, that is crazy. Ask for that money back. He went from his mum can't help, dad can't help, this person can't help. No one's helping. And all of a sudden, bang. This person he called, hey. Mum's <laughs> helping. That's <laughs> exactly what it is. Bank of Dad, please. <laughs> please. Bank of Dad, dude. I smell. <laughs> Dell and Dale may have resolved Daniel's debt, but in Stuart and Vic's next case, they meet a garage owner. You don't suppose I'm going to. Hey, 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 nah. Into the courts to. Research has shown that small businesses are increasingly turning to the courts to claim money owed to them. 
the number of county court judgments issued by small and medium-sized businesses increased by nearly 25% in the second half of last year. The total amount of old small firms is 28, 26 billion? Jeez. High court enforcement agents Stuart McCracken and Elmore Victor are in Salford with a writ to recover just over £6,000. It's owed by MOT Garage, Manchester Commercials and Sons Limited for unpaid consultancy fees. Get the van washed while we're here, Vic. Get a writ paid in full and get the van washed. What a winner. Two for one. The garage is a family business. If the owners can't or won't pay today, the agents have the right to seize goods to offset the debt. Would you like to do this one, Vic? I'll let you do it, mate. Let me do it. Yeah, thank you. Well, I'm right behind you. Yeah. <laughs> the business is owned by three partners, Cleveland, Ansel and Glenn Forbes. Stuart Hub... Mm. We know they're Jamaican, but them is some Jamaican names. <clears throat> I would know. Hopes that at least one of the owners will be on site today. Okay. Alright, you're alright. We're after Cleveland, Ansel or Glenn. Are you able to get them on the phone? We're High Court Enforcement Agents. Who are you, sir? I'm part of the business. You're part of the business. Mm -hmm. What's your surname? My name is Forbes. Forbes. Yeah. This is one of them. Oh yeah, you're one of them. Then, right? It's an outstanding writ in your company name that needs to be paid today, or we will be taking control of goods here that will be sold at auction. Do you understand that? Just a minute. Forbes is the surname of the owners, but Vic needs to find out which one the man is. Are you keeping Do it even, no. does it matter? Enzel. Yeah. Now Mr. Forbes has admitted it's his business, Vic can explain the writ. You see this? It's a writ of control. Outstanding balance as we speak now is £6,384.99. Mm -hmm. pence. The first I know about it, I don't get a letter. Cap. I don't get a letter. You, Cap. <coughs> you won't get a letter from the High Court, sir. How are you going to make payment? I can't make payment where I don't have and I don't get nothing. That's what I'm trying to do. In that I case, don't sir, like I don't get no we'll have work. to take control of goods, which means that you won't be trading today, I don't think. If we take control of the goods outside and have them removed for auction, Okay, I don't think you'd be able to do any MOT. The MOT thing, you can't get them, they belong to the government. So number one, you can't get them. If you can't provide documentation today... That is true. And plus, hang, on, hang on, hang on. You've got seven days to prove to the court who they belong to, OK? Unless you can raise some funds, OK? No, I have no funds. Okay. That would ruin their little business, cos this MOT government, the government wouldn't even trust you no more. Mr Forbes, two things are going to happen today. Mm -hmm. You're either going to make a payment mm -hmm. towards this debt, if you're not going to do that, mm -hmm. we are going to take control of goods. If you let that come, I don't get it. I, if it goes so I'm explaining to you. With all due respect, when we asked where the owners were, you said they're not here at the moment. We've already had one false accusation. Mm -hmm. So to say that you haven't got a letter, sir, I'm sorry, but it doesn't hold water with us. Talk to us, talk to us. Let's start from the beginning. Mm -hmm. You're looking like, dang, you right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, you tell us your side of the story. Mm -hmm. Why? It don't matter. I tell you at the beginning. A couple years ago, some bloke came here, said they will get our rates down, right? Yeah. And he's charging four and a half thousand pounds. So, yeah. uh, so who did you pay? I want to say all that I could just do them thing myself. It appears that Mr. Forbes refused to pay for the advice he was given. The claimant took the case to the county court and won, and then escalated it to the high court. Now he getting sued for giving advice. I mean, yeah. You take my consultation, my consultation costs this much, and then you you don't pay Stuart me for and Vic my, are here to know, collect. For my knowledge, I want it. High court has looked at it and said you owe the money as well. Mm -hmm. I cannot say nothing then. Sir, we're going to go through this whole building. Mm -hmm. Stuart starts taking an inventory of goods that could be seized if Mr. Forbes can't or won't pay the debt. From over here. He's going to start recording goods, sir. Hey, you don't suppose to go in that fucking office. Excuse I me. don't fucking care. Don't tell me I say I don't no, fucking no. care. No, no. Well, don't you hurt us. Get them fuck out there before I throw them out. No. Hey, <laughs> you can't just come in and take it. Hands up. Yeah, we can't. We are breaking the law. We're not breaking the We're law. We're not breaking the law, 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 sir. In any way, shape, or form. Me and Stuart have been working together for a long time, so we know how we work. On most cases, he will take the lead, apply the pressure. They will take offence to it. That's where I will come in as the good cop. 
trying yeah, to just baiting, capturing everybody, baiting them out there. Then, yeah, give me the situation down. Talk to me, sir. Stuart, just yeah. give us five minutes. All right, no problem. Mr. Fox, look here. This is a warrant. We, yeah. we can go any way we want to in this building with this paperwork. If you don't make any payments, sir, we're going to take the goods. You've got to work with me, yes, sir. Come on. I'm trying to help you. Mr. Forbes tries a new tack. He claims that the ownership of the company has been transferred, and therefore he... You should have lived with that. We don't believe you. Is what Stuart and McCracken will say, whatever Stuart and... He's not liable for the debt. Brian... I'll tell you the company name is changed. Say it can't do anything. But Stuart has already turned detective. Look at your MOT license mm -hmm. from uh, the Driver Vehicle Licensing Agency is in that company name that's on the writ. Manchester Commercial and Sons Limited. So your company's trading under that name regardless what that says. When He's still at it. He looking like, God damn. They're good. We're going to have to pay. Go ahead, pay. You actually proved somebody wrong. To prove to them that I know that they're lying gives me immense satisfaction. Are you going to get some money? Are you going to get some? Are you going to get some? No, please don't swear. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Forbes' son steps in to try and reason with his father and explain the agent's tactics. You have a good and you have a bad. He goes, he talks to you and he goes on and sits around the place. That's what they do, that's their mm. job. I'm thinking that he can't be no, 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 Anything that he's going to take, it's out of our hands. They're already writing it down. With Mr. Forbes showing no sign of paying. It is not paying. Stuart decides to apply some pressure. How is that recovery? He calls for transport to take assets away from the garage. The recovery vehicle needs to come to Cheltenham Street. We've got MLT service equipment, we've got tools. So once we run recovery, we've run recovery, you need to talk to me. Ah, oh, I forgot they could take the, the equipment, yeah. We've got computers, desks. Okay, no problem. Speak to you later. Bye bye. These computers worth something? Main tree, sir. So you've got about 45 minutes to raise it. It's a pressure point that we use. It makes the defendant realise that this is what's going to happen if you don't listen to what Vic is trying to tell you. It has an amazing effect with people who are trying to find any reason not to cooperate with us. With the prospect of losing assets vital to his business, Mr. Forbes finally starts to talk about payments towards the £6,300. I'll give you a deposit. I'll give you a pay part of money and I'll get it started. Yes. Are you paying, sir? I'm, I'm giving a check. Not taking a piece of paper. Don't take checks. We don't deal in checks. Where's the law say that you can't take checks? I've done my work for a long time now. I know what I can and can't do, sir. Right, if you don't want to check, you have to go to your bank and say you can't get the cash and give it to you. You're going to get cash out? You need 6,300. I'm going to get 2,000 pounds. 2,000 pounds? Yeah. It's not near enough, sir. You've got to pay 50% today, sir. 3,300. Then you the balance. You look for me. Found a pressure point with him because the second I started to get serial numbers, he started getting very aggressive. And he's gone to the bank now to see what money he can actually get out of the bank. It's a game of poker at the end of the day. So let's just see what happens. But after 45 minutes, there's still no sign of Mr. Forbes. Hi. Have you spoke to your dad? Yes, he's been about, about 10 minutes. Sorry. 10 minutes. Thank you very much, sir. If Mr. Forbes doesn't come back soon, Stuart and Vic can start taking goods, even in his absence. But after another 10 minutes, Vic's patience is wearing thin. Can't wait any longer, mate. He's on his way back. Yeah, he's on his way back. We've been here for two hours now. Finally, Mr. Forbes returns. Then a Mitsubishi? He's back still. So let's just see what he comes <clears> back <throat> with. I'm going to tell you one thing. I'm going to listen. Okay. This man is a decent gentleman. If you come and I bully you here, I don't care. Have you got the cash then? Then we can leave you to get on with the rest of your day, sir. So. Don't you bully me. Yeah. I, don't, I don't take bullies. No, it's all Come in and decent. Don't do it. I don't like it. But so you've got, you understand we've got a job to do, and we understand you yeah, have a yeah, job to do. Yeah, yeah, but you understand, but why he don't behave like you? Why yeah. he doesn't behave like you? So let's resolve this matter, sir. If yeah. the money's here, then we'll go. How much have we got here? Three. Okay. There's 3,000 I've counted. 500, 3,500 cash. Is that all you can get? Yes. Mr. Forbes may have found half the money, 
But that doesn't mean that the claimant will accept the deal. Stewart calls the office. He's paid 3,500 in cash to us that now, and he can clear the rest in 30 days' time. We've got a control goods agreement in place for the equipment that's in the garage at the moment. Bye-bye. Yep, that's fine, yep. 30 days. 30 days. Balance to be cleared is £2,884.99. Take me champer and name, sir. If Mr Forbes doesn't clear the balance in 30 days, as agreed, the agents will return to seize the assets. That's the bank now. Yeah, they'd lose it. Everyone's got a pressure point, and his pressure point was he didn't like us wandering around taking control of goods. People do class, some people class it as a, a tactic, OK? It's clearly a tactic. We know it's a tactic. We've been watching for, for four seasons. A bully boy tactic, but it's not. It's one of our powers that we use, and that's what's forced them into the pain. Yeah, I wouldn't say it's a bully boy tactic. I'd say it's like, you know, you know what buttons to push. You just know. I figure they go in there, they read, they assess the situation, and then they evaluate and communicate <laughs> telepathically and be like, all right. But we know what we must do. <laughs> Household debt in the UK has risen by more than £34 billion in less than three years. A recent study has shown that over 8 million adults are struggling with their debts. <laughs> oh, wait! Britain's household debt is predicted to rise to one to two point five trillion by today. That was three years ago now. High Court enforcement agents Delroy Anglin and his son Dale are back on the road. This time in Dartford, Kent. What have we got, Dale? We have got Miss Janet James. Owes the amount of three thousand seven hundred and four pounds twenty six. Janet James owes money to a solicitor. After Miss Janet James, she owes the amount of three thousand seven hundred. Everybody owe three k plus today. That's tough. Four pounds twenty six. Janet James owes money to a solicitor after she decided to drop a compensation claim following an accident. Decent houses are. Yeah. Some parts of Dartford is okay, you know. The claimant has transferred the case to the High Court, and Mrs. James must resolve the case with the agents today. Hello, my name is Dale Anglin, High Court Enforcement Agent. My name's Dale Langland, High Court Enforcement Agent. I'm looking for Miss Janet James. Please don't try and intimidate me. I'm not trying to intimidate you. You have to wait till my husband comes home now. Are, are you? Are you? Are you Janet? He'll be on his way home now. Okay, no way. That's fine. But are you Janet? Why? Because that's who I'm looking for. He's on his way now. Okay, but obviously, if you're not her, then I can leave. Hello. No worries. Mrs. James seems unwilling to talk. So Del does. Sometimes it get like that, man. You gotta. <laughs> hey, I ain't go. I was just saying, when you black and you that big, you gotta understand, like, people are going to get intimidated and you didn't you don't have to do anything. You know what I'm saying? All you gotta do is be there. You see how he softened up his voice and everything. That's like something that we learn to make ourselves seem less aggressive. Soften up your voice. Hi, how are you? Is everything good? I'm here to collect $30,000. What are we gonna do about that today? You know what I'm saying? It Sometime it work, sometime it don't, <laughs> you know? Just like we all got a professional voice, like a Harvard voice on the phone when you're trying to get something done professionally. 
The same thing, but in person. There's a vehicle check on the 4x4 in the driveway. If it's free of finance, it can be seized to offset the debt. Clear of finance, yeah. Excellent stuff. Thanks very much. Value 1,500 quid. That's half the debt, isn't it? OK. A vehicle is one of the most valuable assets we can seize. For us, it's the best bargaining chip we have, which can make our job a lot quicker if they won't communicate with us. Five minutes later, Janet's husband arrives. Oh, hey, let's have in. Man, he came up mighty aggressive. Anybody that pull up in this work truck, they're already mad that they had to leave work because this is like, I'm on a job type work. Like, every job pays differently and everything is money. Like, he upset. Hey, your problem is? Good afternoon, No problem. Sir. Huh? No problem. See. With Mrs. Jane. <laughs> My bad. That was just a hey, y'all don't be thinking it's funny how people pull up. Look how you pull up. And your problem is? Hey, your problem is? Good afternoon. No problem. Sir. Huh? No problem. We'll see. My evasive thoughts, if I was Dell, I would have said Merry Christmas to you as well. Like, and that's just my evasive thoughts. Like that's why I couldn't do a job like this, because I'm going to say the first thing that comes to my mind. And I'm gonna be like, well, Merry Christmas to you, too. No problem. And he would have, ha, 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 very funny. You know what I'm With saying? With Mrs. Like, James refusing to talk and her husband wanting answers, will the agents ever get the £3,700 they came for? Find out next time on Dragon Ball Z. My bad. Kent. James. We do not need a recap. Seized. Got a high court writ again. Oh, we're looking for a Miss Janet James. Right. And we've got a high court writ against her. Now the agents need to get Mr. James to work with them so they can get this case resolved today. I'm waiting for the word from the um Citizens Advice Bureau who's dealing with it. Right, what is they've transferred this up to the High Court now for enforcement purposes. Right. Um obviously the, the amount now outstanding is 370426, um, which obviously we've come here today to collect. But you can't because we've got nothing. You know, I'm going to get in touch with the citizen's advice girl. We'll get back in. Mr. James claims he and his wife have disputed the debt. We are going to have to take this car. Yeah. 100%. 100%. That's the way it's looking. I don't want to provoke him too much, but at the same time. Five minutes later, Mr. James comes back out. The voice are getting us listening. We're supposed to be having this put aside. Set aside, yeah. He claims that following an accident, his wife was cold called by a firm offering to win her one thousand pounds. Never do that. Never do. If so, you reach out on your own, don't let nobody cold call you. If somebody cold call you, just tell them no. I, I got my own solicitor. If they're cold calling you, you may have a case. You might want to go look into it, but don't accept that call. Accept the advice that you may have a case, but go somewhere else. <laughs> Do your own research on lawyers. Pounds in compensation. A couple of weeks later, they've so sent the paper to it. Basically, you want, to, you want to rewrite a history, that's called lying. We're not going to perjure ourselves. No. Yeah, no, 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 argue with that. So then they've gone ahead with this shit. Unhappy with the solicitors, Mrs. James halted proceedings, but then the firm billed her for their time and took the matter to court. We're in a... Which ain't nothing wrong with that either, but at the same time, you gotta... I don't know, most of them solicitors, man, they work, they pay, like, oh yeah, pay us when you win. We'll take pay when we win no time sooner, but like, if you switch in mid... If you switch mid-case, they're gonna probably sue you for their time. Situation or bill you for their time where that money needs to be paid. That's why you got to do your own research ahead of time. It's nothing to do you got no funds, no money. No funds whatsoever. I'll put a bill on a 50 quid in pocket, and that's it. Do you think you could get a While Mr. James claims he can't pay, the agents must get the case resolved one way or another. We'll have to start looking at whose assets are here, for example, the vehicles. Take a vehicle, just gonna fuck her up at all. Listen, that's why we're trying to sort out payment as opposed to removal. 
Yeah. When you back now, it will be half. Be about eighteen hundred pounds. Be the minimum we could take today. And I was not well going to get there. But with the risk of losing the four by four, Mr. James starts trying to raise some funds. We don't want to make his life any harder by taking the vehicle, which clearly she needs. However. It is what it is, and it's got to be dealt with. Mr. James has his son-in-law on the phone. Hello. Eighteen hundred pound I can take today to walk and give them some time. Yeah. He's going to go and pick me missus up. Yeah. She's got a lump of money on her. She's going to go to the cash point, get the rest of it, and yeah. then come, then, then come to you. How much money can they withdraw from the bank out here? Out here, out there. Out here is like maximum, like depending on what account you can withdraw, like a five hundred. Mr. James's son-in-law offers to pay half the debt, but there's a problem. Can you jump in the four by four, mate? The issue we've got on the four by four is obviously that's the only asset we have here of hers. Listen, listen, tell her, listen you want this problem resolved? This is the best way and the only way it can be done within the next half hour. He needs to jump in the four by four. He needs to pick the missus up with the baby because the baby sits in the in the in the four by four. We we'll pick the money up. She's got nine hundred quid on her now. We're we'll gonna go to the cash point and get the rest. Oh, okay. See, nine hundred. Oh, sorry, so five hundred is the max there too. Then bring it back to you, please. Get this resolved as quickly as possible. Okay? Yeah. You got, but you ain't got no choice. Bill is worried that the 4x4 may never come back. We won't be able to let you leave with that vehicle. As it stands, the only leeway we've got if you don't pay this is this vehicle. So obviously I can't really give that to you. You can't leave because you don't trust us. I don't know you. So it's not a matter of, it's not that I don't trust you, I don't know you. So I, do you, it's like you saying you trust me, you don't, because you don't know me. 100%, I like how he put that. That boy's smart. His dad did a good job at teaching him not to be a fool. Yep. The agents are in a dilemma. They would rather get a payment than seize the car. But if Mr. James doesn't return with the 4x4, they could end up with nothing. He seems quite genuine, he seems cool. Oh. Wait, what? Oh, he's trying to take the four, but the white truck as well. Hey, listen, give me the 900. What's the pin code to your uh, ATM card? We'll figure it out that way. Like, I got it. My hands are a bit tighter on it if he's willing to work with us and pay it off. Um, I'm going to trust him. I don't like it too much. You're asking me to trust him to go with the vehicle. Uh, it's a bit of a gamble, but our options are limited. Despite Dell's reservations, Dale makes a decision. It is a bit of a gamble, but it's only like two minutes left in the episode. We, you got to do something. My untrusting side says no, but... It is sunny after all, so are we going to let him take it? Um, take the car. I like the wee part. Dell moves the van to allow the 4x4 to leave. All the agents can do now is wait. It'll come back. I don't think it will. I just don't. You gotta come back. What are you, <laughs> ain't no, what are you gonna do? I don't know if he's gonna come over the car. He live here. Oh yeah, that's true. It's a bit of a gamble. I'm in one of those situations where if he's got it wrong, I would enjoy the drive home. I've been proved wrong before. <laughs> Me and my dad have different ways of doing certain things. Sometimes we do disagree. Sometimes in this job, you do have to just go with your gut feeling on it and trust people. 20 minutes later, see, he came Dale's back. gamble pays off. Extremely professional. Over to you, son. Mr. James's daughter has half the money. She came through aggressive walking, didn't she? Okay, yeah, of course. Yeah, we of course. Still, we're just coming up and right out. There's a copy of the receipt. Mrs. James now has 14 days to appeal. Wait, she came with 1800 So how? Wait, 900 out the ATM cash point? The case, or pay the remaining half of the debt. If she doesn't, the agents will be back. I know nothing about gambling. He gambled and won on this occasion. Gambled and won. He turned back up with the car and the money, as he said. Good judge of character, I guess that's all it is. Just luck. Yeah, he seemed like a good dude. dude. The Santa Claus guy, he seemed like a good dude.
Janet Jane's debt was paid in full four days after the agent's visit. Oliver Waymond resubmitted his appeal and the case was set aside. Oh, okay. All right, dang. You see what I'm saying, though? You see how aggressive both of them came out? And it was just a clerical error that he went back and fixed and now it's done? Like, like no point in arguing. <laughs> But the claimant returned to court, won the case, and the debt was paid. Well, you bought yourself some time. Dang. <laughs> Daniel, you must have really just been straight up freeloading. Like a savage, my boy. Seventy a month. Man. That's good. All right. See you later. Leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post. I'm cool.